Hi, this is JP Morgan. And this is Kenneth Merrill. Today on Sign Lens, we're going to take a look at the A6600 and the Fuji X-T3. We just got back from the alleys of Pasadena where we shot great footage of how these two cameras compare with each other. And then we lost it all because we we're did. idiots. We are idiots. We actually did lose all the footage we shot this morning. Which is a shame because it was probably the best footage you would have ever seen on YouTube. Oh, hands down. But we do have everything we shot on the two cameras, so we have all mm -hmm. that to look at. So it's not like it's a total loss, but it certainly felt like a kick in the pants. <laughs> but the A6600 can only be looked at from the point of view of if you took the A6000, the A6400, and you put them in a bag and you shook them up, well, and, the the and the A6500, and the A6500, you yeah. take all of them in a bag and shook it up and dumped it on the table, it would be an A6600. You go. It's got the image stabilization, it's got the uh, eye track, the uh, focus, uh, mo uh, focus following and eye tracking. I mean, it's got all the things that all those other cameras kind of had some of, and it's all together in the A6600. Yeah. So how about the Fuji, though? I mean, I like the Fuji because it has all the dials and the knobs, and, you know, Fuji's not, it, I, Fuji's always had good color. It has those really cool film emulations. Uh, I really just want to see how it pans out in terms of you know dynamic range and ISO and stuff. Well, let's take a look at the image quality test, the first thing we shot. And we love this little setup that we have in Pasadena because we see the sun in the morning gives us a nice rim light on our model, and then we bounce the reflector, it bounces the light back in their face, and it just gives a very pretty uh, image, a great color, got a lot of color there. So let's take a look at how these two compare. I mean, right off the bat, first of all, let's just say the Sony was a little brighter out of the box. We set both cameras identically to the same settings, and the Sony was still a little bit brighter. Uh, you know, I look as I look at this, immediately I look at the color of the Fuji, and it is rich, and it is pretty wonderful. Now, some of that has to do with the camera raw conversion that we did here, because these are raw images that we have converted, and you could play around with that completely. There's so many things you could do. But out of the box, with just a little exposure uh, change, and we did play with the color just a little bit, try to make them a little sim more the similar to each other. Temperature, temperature is yeah. all. We're not doing anything with the you know individual colors or anything like that, or hues or tints. Just the white balance. Uh, I just think the Fuji is a very pretty image. Yeah, I, the yellow has a really nice sort of rich depth to it. I'm not feeling as much with the Sony. And also the background, I don't know, there's just a nice contrast, color contrast yeah. going on in the Fuji. All right, so let's move on here. Let's go to the autofocus test. I love the autofocus test because I think autofocus is such a dream. <laughs> it's so amazing. Uh, let's start here with the Fuji camera on the autofocus. The Fuji does have eye tracking. It's only yeah. pretty well as it walks towards us. Now, we put these not on the highest... Uh, uh, speed for shooting images. We were on the on multiple images, but not the high. Both these cameras could shoot so fast. Yeah. So crazy fast. We set it's them like, to like a, me a medium drive, so it was a little bit easier. And this Fuji is holding focus oh, my word. throughout the whole range. If you punch in and track her eyes, there was, I think, only one image out of all of them that was not sharp. So let's take a look at the Sony. A6600, autofocus. The A6600 also holding really well. I noticed when I was shooting, the eye tracking picks up her eye when it's further away on the Sony, which is nice. It seemed to me that it performed pretty much equally as well. When they yeah. get like that last couple steps, they always and miss a couple. And they're slowing down, <laughs> so, so it should be. But you know what? No complaints. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you're talking about two frames out of you know everything we yeah. shot there, which is how many? Like 24 frames. Yeah. yeah I mean, that that's a pretty incredible. So I mean, both of these did extremely well, although the Fuji did surprise, surprise me, surprised you. Yeah, huh? yeah. I feel like Sony's always kind of, not always, but often the winner in these competitions. Yeah, and, a lot of times they're very Fuji was top. right there, right there. Yep. Here is our dynamic range test where we basically over and underexpose both cameras by four stops and then bring, try and bring the details back, bring, bring the images back to where they should be. This is a very contrasty situation to start off with. You have very little detail in the brick wall on the camera left side from the get-go. And the sky. Yeah, and the sky. So just recovering the, uh, the, the, the normal exposures on both of these was a bit of a challenge. Okay, so we went to plus one, and you know what? Just as you would expect, you start to lose detail almost immediately. There's just, yeah. you're one yeah. stop off from correct exposure, and the brick wall on the left-hand side is is pretty much gone with the Sony. Well, just to be clear, the brick wall is probably five stops. Yeah, like I say, we're talking about already a very, very challenging yeah. dynamic range. Just just to be clear, we metered, we used an incident meter right in front of her, so we metered for the light that's falling on her, 
on our skin and on the color checker chart. So that is where we're calling you know proper exposure plus or minus. The wall in the background is going to be way overexposed to begin with, and then you know the shadows, of course, are going to be underexposed to begin with. So at plus one, we're already losing most of the detail in that wall. By plus two, that wall is just absolutely gone. And, and with, the color shifts all over the place. Whoa, with the Sony, the color just goes super Woo. orange and yellow really fast. Yep. Plus three stops here. I mean, blind. both cameras are really struggling. The, struggling. the Sony's clipping on her skin, which is kind of crazy. It is really clipping on her skin. Her skin's definitely holding better with the Fuji. Yeah, absolutely. Everything about the Fuji, there's more color, there's more density. We know this about digital cameras. They do not like to be overexposed, not even a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't go, I would just stop at plus one. Don't overexpose. Don't overexpose plus stop. one. <laughs> Don't even do that. Um, but I will say, you know, even at plus two stops, where I think we can definitively say the Fuji was still a little bit better. Yep. Um, but now when we went to minus a stop. Minus a stop. They both look pretty clean. Very clean. We're the, holding the wall very easily on the back. I mean, I weird. feel like the Sony is easier to lift. You know, it's definitely a little brighter. That's that's a processing thing, but um, I feel like there is less contrast overall in the Sony. Yep. That spider checker, the color looks really nice on on both of them. Really. Both of them, really. Here we're at minus two. Both these images are looking really good. Not seeing a lot of color shifting or anything. And then minus three. I mean, uh, you have an acceptable, usable image. So if we blow this up here at minus three stops, obviously there's more grain. I think there's more grain in the Fuji. If you look at the color checker, you're seeing a Most lot definitely. of texture in the Fuji. Most definitely. If you're punching into the color checker on the Sony, it's still pretty clean. The skin, her skin is much nicer on yeah. the Sony. Uh, yeah. But anyways, for the dynamic range overall, I mean, I feel like the Sony is cleaner underexposed. The Fuji's a little better overexposed, not by a ton. Um, Sony might win out on this one, but the color on the Fuji is really nice. Color is say. very it's, nice. It's not totally blowing it here, just not quite as, not quite as much information as the Sony. Okay, so here's our ISO test, and off the bat, of course, again, the Sony is brighter than the Fuji. Yep, which we always see. It's always always a little brighter. But uh, they're both. Looking this is good, 200 of ISO. Yeah, 200 both ISO. Look great. Here's 400 ISO. And still looking great. Yep. I'm actually surprised at how close the color looks on the color checker charts. Uh-huh. Huh. Moving to 800 ISO. Yeah, not seeing much texture that really stands out. No, everything's pretty clean across the board. Let's go to 1600 ISO. I feel like 1600 ISO is where the crop sensors start to underperform compared to full full frame sensors. You start to see a little bit in, in the neck here, just a little bit. Yeah, her skin. Yeah. If we look at the color checkers, there's a little bit in some of these chips and yeah, in the background. Spider checker still looks good. Um, moving to 3200 ISO. Yeah, I'm definitely starting to see it now in the background for sure. And you, we are starting to lose a shadows. little bit of detail on the shadow side of her face, especially on the Fuji. Mm -hmm. 6400 ISO. Wow, yeah, I really see lots it. of yeah. lots of noise. Even the Sony's caught up now. I feel like yeah. 12,800 ISO. Again, lots of noise here. Yeah. I feel like the Sony usually, you know, they usually start to go a little pasty with the colors here. Colors held pretty nice, it's actually. Holding pretty good, yeah. 25,600. Whoa, look at the look at the Sony. Well, they are. Both of them. They're both, both just gone. Performing pretty equally there. Color does seem a little more subdued on the Sony than it is on the Fuji. Yeah, but that's been across the board, you Yeah. All right, well, I mean, I feel like they, those are head-to-head -head match right there. They are head-to-head -head all the way across the board. I mean, and performing, <laughs> the ISO looks so nice at, at I mean, certainly up to uh, 32. 32, yeah, yeah, yeah looked very good. All right, so the first confusing thing I've done here is I've switched it so that the Sony's on the left and the Fuji's on the right. Just keeping you on your toes. All right, just keep it <laughs> us alive. Keep it us alive today. Sony's shooting S Log uh, Picture Profile 9, that's S Log 3, and then the Fuji, we're shooting their F Log, which is not quite as flat, but we're getting the same good results from both, I feel like. So yeah, plus one, they're holding the wall and the, I mean, this is a, a extremely difficult dynamic range. I mean, that wall on the left is at least five stops. Yeah, yeah, they're both holding really well. Plus two stops, they're both still holding really well. Something you never get away with still images. I mean, video, uh, overexposing it is actually, uh, it wants to be overexposed in video. It does not want to be underexposed. I want to point out that the Sony has this weird yellow stuff going on in her skin, especially if you look at her nose. Mm -hmm. I'm not seeing that as much with the Fuji. I feel like the Fuji has a more naturalistic look overall. 
Um, but the Sony does have more punch with the colors. So yeah, it definitely does. There's that. Plus three stops coming up, which is where the wall finally clips. Yep. For both cameras. Both cameras. So they, I mean, you're, the wall is clipped completely. Yeah, and the color's starting to go pretty bad for both of them at this point. Yep. And then plus five, yeah, the skin's starting to clip a little bit. The color's terrible. Look at the dress. I mean, yep. it's no good. But they're both neck and neck. All right, moving into minus one stop here. The Fuji's really desaturated on this. It's amazing how much it is, actually. But then but look the at the Sony's got some Sony's noise. Sony's got some noise and red in her face is really weird. Yeah. I mean, it just looks terrible. This is at minus one. Mm -hmm. Minus two. Again, Sony's super noisy. Fuji's going a little green. Sony's a little red. <laughs> um, it's they fall. Video falls off the cliff when you underexpose it. Whereas yeah. look at minus three in the Sony. Yeah. Oh my word, there's a really party going bad. on back there. It's a fireworks show. Minus four, of course. I mean, what do you expect? <laughs> I think I feel like the Fuji won this one overall because it's not quite as bad in the underexposure. Um, and I like the look of it a little bit better, but the color in the Sony is still pretty good. It is. I mean, it's not like it's yeah. day and night or anything. It's yeah. very similar. All right, so let's talk ergonomics and usability. Well, always, I've always loved the Fuji, just the old style feel of buttons and, you know, aperture, shutter, everything is on top, it's accessible. So it just has a vintage feel about yeah. it. I, it might be a matter of taste though, because some people are going to like the Sony oh, with the absolutely. more modern, you know, body yeah. and stuff. I also like that the Sony has the E-mount, which is very adaptable. Lots of people have adapted lenses to it, so it has that flexibility. You've got a lot of options there that are coming out. They, they really do. I was, it's interesting to me because a friend of mine who's a football coach and a football player, big hands, big mm -hmm. guy, and he, he's thinking about the A6600, and I'm going, you know, you might want to hold this thing and yeah. just make sure this works for your hands. It's pretty small. Yeah, it's very small, so you might want to make sure that you feel comfortable with it before you make that decision. But the grip is more robust than it used to be. It is, the A6600, absolutely. Yeah. And it has that larger battery, yeah. which was always an issue with the, uh, the first in this series, but now it's got yeah. that larger battery, same battery the A7R three and four have, so yeah. it's really a robust battery that's gonna be perfect for this camera. I know. So there you go, if you're thinking about buying one of these cameras, check it out on our affiliate program at B&H. Love to have you help support us here at Slam Lens by purchasing through that affiliate program. Also, follow us on the Slam Lens, like us, follow us, you know, subscribe to our channel, follow us on Instagram. We have a great Instagram that is just going like gangbusters right now, so get over and, and follow us on Instagram, and keep those cameras rolling. And keep on clicking.